We're going to be in Romans again, chapter 2. Anderson's missed a few weeks, so So we finished up chapter 1, now we're in chapter 2. Last week we looked at correct judgment, biblical judgment. (laughs) There is a right way and a wrong way to judge. Amen. We're going, to, we're going to look at verse 4 and most of verse 5 today. Here he's still speaking of those in the previous verses who were hypocritical in their judgments, who were judging others while doing the same thing. They, those who thought they would escape the judgment of God. Verse 4 says, Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee into repentance? But after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasures up unto thyself wrath against the day of judgment and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Amen. I'm going to turn back. We don't have to turn there, but Ecclesiastes 8 and verse 11. I want to read us a verse here to kind of get our thoughts going. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 11 says because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily therefore the heart of the sons of man is fully set in them to do evil. Amen. Because God doesn't just immediately rain down his wrath and judgment upon sinners they think they've gotten away with it. Right. It says they are fully set in them to do evil. This man doesn't Fear what's going to happen because he thinks he's going to get away with it. Right. And that is the, the mindset of those who Paul is speaking of here. That when he asked in the previous verse, just do you think that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Right. So you have some, sometimes we expect God to do just like he did with Sodom and Gomorrah and rain down fire and brimstone and or core and history would open up the earth and swallow them. But God does not always work that way. Right. So he's asking them here, he says, For despite us thou the riches of his goodness, do they really think that little or, or even hate the goodness of God? Hmm. That's what he's asking them. Right. So even though they are wicked in their thoughts and even though they are not right before him, yet. They still are partakers of his goodness. Mm-hmm. They all are partakers of the goodness of God <laughs> to some degree. Mm-hmm. You know, one day they will be on the receiving end of his judgment. Yet currently they are, receive goodness from God, and forbearance, and long suffering. Matthew five forty five tells us that he sends. Rain on the just and the unjust causes the sun to shine on the good and the evil. Mm-hmm. That's just one example of how he bestows his goodness upon all. If it was not for the goodness of God, this whole world would cease to function and exist. Amen. First Peter tells us that it's by the word of the Lord that the world now is kept in store on the day of judgment. Mm-hmm. Well, I understand that God has placed physical laws in place that govern this world, but yet, if not for his upholding word, the stars would fall, the moon would fall, the You're sun right. would cease to shine. It is ultimately God who is upholding this world, even though it is very wicked and against him. Mm-hmm. So turn back to Psalms for just a moment. The Psalms speak a lot of the goodness of God. Psalm 33. <coughs> Notice the last part of verse 5. It says, The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Amen. But the whole earth is full of his goodness. That not just not just here in America or not just where people serve him. 
We have the whole earth, it says, is full of his goodness. Mm-hmm. That even the most wicked of men are partakers of the goodness of the Lord. I didn't write this in my notes, but I think it's in, in Psalm 107, I believe. I don't want to turn there, but it speaks of how his goodness endures forever. How his, how his goodness is continual. Amen. Man ought to praise him and thank him for his goodness and his wonderful works. God is very good to his creation despite our transgressions against him. You're right. And yet Paul's asking here, do we despise that? Do we think little of it? Because if it were not for his goodness, we would not be able to enjoy even the slightest of blessings. Amen. And he goes on to list next, back in our text, after goodness, he says, and forbearance. That is, one might call it tolerance, not that he, God is tolerant of sin, but that he is, has self-restraint, you could say, that he is withholding his wrath. Mm-hmm. And God forbears with us, even though wickedness abounds in this world. God is still in control. And then he also lists alongside that long suffering. Mm-hmm. That God is patient, that he is enduring man's wickedness. If God was only just and righteous, he would have smited out of existence man a long time ago. You're right, man. He would have been just and righteous to, in Noah's day, just kill everything and start all over again. Yet he is merciful and gracious, and he says here, forbearing and long suffering. Man. If we turn over to chapter 9, we'll see just briefly here, we'll touch on his long suffering. Romans 9, verse 22 and 23. It says, What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath and of destruction, <coughs> that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy which he had before prepared unto glory? Amen. God is long suffering, not that he is just. Up there wringing his hands, waiting for man to make the right decision. That he has an ultimate purpose. That he might, as he says here in verse 23, that he might make known the riches of his glory and the vessels of mercy. Mm-hmm. God is long suffering on our behalf. That he might ultimately save all that is his, and that he might use us according to his will. Amen. That he might get glory from it. And ultimately, that's why he is long suffering to the, as they're called here, vessels of wrath. Because God has a purpose much bigger than just simply judging sin. Right. That he, he might get the glory in all things. If we turn over to 2 Peter, we'll see one of the Armenians' favorite verses. 2 Peter chapter 3. Verse number nine says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but his long suffering to us were not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Mm-hmm. And God is long suffering because of, because of his elect people. Mm-hmm. Amen. All of those must come to repentance. Right. He knows verse 15. It says, An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. Even as our brother, beloved brother Paul, has also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, that God is long-suffering, that he might bring about salvation to all of his people. Amen. That he, he could just wipe it all out and be just, but yet that is not according to his purpose and plan. So it's that he might save those whom Christ died for, that he might... Though wickedness abound, yet he might still have a people that would serve him. Yet God is good and forbearing and long suffering even to the wicked today. Yet they, in their natural state, despise that. Mm-hmm. Let us not be guilty of doing the same thing. 
does not think little of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering. Mm -hmm. Amen. Rather let us really praise him and thank him for those things. So if he was not long suffering and forbearing towards us, he, he would have probably taken us out of here a long time ago as well. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to our text in Romans 2. The last part of verse 4 says, Not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. He's, a, he's saying, Don't, Do you not know that it's the goodness of God that leads one to repentance? Amen. So it's not man's desire, man's decision, but rather the goodness of God which leads one to <coughs> repentance. If it were not for the goodness of God, none would come to repentance, would they? Amen. <clears throat> well, certainly repentance is not what saves a person, but yet you will not find anywhere that one has been saved without it. Amen. Luke 5, 32 says that Christ says, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And, he, and then in chapter 24, verse 47, he says that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in all the world. Well, repentance goes hand in hand with salvation. Amen. Yes, yeah, the goodness of God that leads men to it. Man in his own thinking is not going to lead himself to repentance. Uh, they might have the repentance of Judas, who was bothered because he got caught, if you will, because he, his conscience might have bothered him a little bit. But, Repentance that leads to salvation can only come from God. Amen. Titus 2 and 11 tells us that the grace of God which brings salvation has appeared to all men. Now it's not that God has just put his grace out there and it's up to you to make the right decision, but yet it has been presented before all men. But none mm -hmm. will be without excuse. Amen. Man will not be able to stand before him and say, well, God, I didn't know about your goodness, and I didn't know about your grace. Well, God is, for lack of a better way of saying it, made it, it's available for all. It's, yet only by his goodness will one come to repentance. Amen. Let's go on to verse 5 here. He says, But after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasures up unto thy self wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. This is why men will not come to repentance on their own, because they are hard-hearted and impenitent in heart. That they mm -hmm. This is the natural state of man, that they will, in their own hearts, have no desire for repentance, have no desire for the things of God. Ezekiel 36, turn there very quickly, Ezekiel 36, verse 26. Ezekiel 36, 26 says, A new heart also will I give unto you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take out the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. Verse 27 says, I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you shall keep my judgments and do them. A man has a, a stony heart, a heart that's hard as stone naturally. Amen. Mm -hmm. And it will stay that way, except God gave him this new heart. This heart, he calls it a heart of flesh, one that's able to be molded, and one that's pliable, one that can be worked on. No, a stony heart it has no desire to change. It will yeah. be cold and hard, and it will not ever turn to God of its own. That's why God says He will put a new heart within us and a new spirit within us. Amen. Acts 17, verse 30 tells us that God commands all men everywhere to repent. So the command is there. The, the grace of God is there, if you will, but yet man in his own hardness and repentant heart will not turn to God. Amen. Man is unrepentant by nature unless God 
Most people, unless the goodness of God leads them to that repentance, he will stay in that unrepentant state. And the last part of verse 5 ought to trouble anyone who doesn't know Christ, the Savior. It really ought to bother any of us that do know, uh, or do have loved ones that don't know Christ, the Savior. Right. So he says, After thy hardness and intent heart treasures up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, that they are in this unrepentant and hard-hearted state, right. that they are storing up more and more wrath against themselves. Who me? But they will not be able to stand before God and say, well, I didn't know better, God, ever. You never gave me the chance. You know, their own impendence and hard-heartedness will be really their testimony against them. Mm -hmm. Amen. When they stand before God in judgment, with their own hard hardness will condemn them. Mm -hmm. If you don't know Christ as Savior, that should be a troubling thought that it will be on your own account that you are staying condemned before him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Lord willing, I think we'll look more at this wrath and revelation next week, but we see examples of it in Revelation. We see it, the full wrath of God poured out upon Sinners and they're cast into the lake of fire for all of eternity. And yet it will not be because God is a hateful God, or because God is a mean or unjust God, but it will because it will be because men receive their just reward. Right. And some seem to think that God owes us salvation, that or that man is deserving of salvation, but yet no man is deserving of this wrath, this Amen. righteous judgment. This man is deserving of the condemnation that he is already under. Mm -hmm. If only separate apart from the goodness of God, all men will go there. Amen. If you don't know Christ the Savior, all they can do is point you to Christ. He is the one that can save. We can't trust in good feelings or decisions or baptism or for peace is prayer after me theology but the goodness of God must lead one to repentance. Amen. No the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. That will be the day when we all stand before him and it says that it says there in Revelation the Dead, both small and great, will stand before him. Mm -hmm. It will be judged every man according to his works. Right. That's a little, we'll touch on that a little bit more in verse 6 when he says, who, who will render to every man according to his deeds? Man thinks he wants to be judged by his works, but when he stands before God, he'll realize his works were very, very shortcoming of the standard of God. His Amen. Will not be able to live up to what is required. Though Christ, his works were sufficient with him. His finished work on the cross and his death, burial, and resurrection, that is the only thing that can allow us to stand before God. Just Amen. Well, if not, if you're in your this natural, unrepentant, hard-hearted state, you will stand before God and be judged according to your works. Mm -hmm. <coughs> And you find your works were very lacking. Amen. You will say, Depart from me, workers of iniquity, for I never knew you. That is the end state of all of these here that are hard hearted, unrepentant, that despise the goodness and forbearance and long suffering of God. But let us, as his people, thank him and praise him that he is long suffering, that he is good, that he is forbearing. Amen. He has given us that new heart, which is not unrepentant anymore, but that is not hard-hearted anymore. I always like what Brother Pink said, it's not the absence of sin that, it's not the absence of sin, but uh, the sorrowing over it that Amen. separates true believers from empty professors. Amen. Not that God has made us sinlessly perfect or that he is 
removed all sin from our life somehow, but yet the difference between someone who's truly been born again and someone who is hard-hearted and unrepentant is that sin will bother them. Right. Amen. But if you're not bothered by sin, if you're not troubled by the sin that's in your own life or <coughs> the sin that is around us, then perhaps you have never truly experienced the goodness of God in that way. Let's go ahead and close with that thought. Amen. Yeah.